some nuts, dried fruit, more dried fruit. Oh, chocolate, definitely chocolate. Hey, today we're taking a look at the story of how Jesus served up a big lunch to a big crowd. Skyler! One pizza pipe! In hot. You okay? Yep. Hey guys, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. This month, we're talking about how following Jesus changes the way we treat others. Right, Sebastian? Um. Still not feeling great. I dropped your lunch. Total cuts move. It's okay. I didn't really want pizza. You're literally wearing a pizza shirt. I... And that growl came directly from your stomach. Okay, but that's besides the point. I mess up all the time. Mistakes and accidents happen. You're worth so much more than a dropped pizza. I guess. I just want to go back and change the great pizza catastrophe of 24. How about we make our own instead? Make our own pizza with what? The Stoy Lab always comes through. Oh, and the snack pantry. I just restocked. Yeah, this could work. Let's make it. Okay, we're all set up. Uh, I got some string cheese I can use as pizza cheese. I got some tomato sauce. And I even found a can of anchovies. I definitely did not put those in the snack pantry. I want to try them. We're starting the dough for the pizza crust. You'll need two cups of water, five and a half cups of all-purpose flour, four tablespoons of olive oil, two to three teaspoons of salt, one to two teaspoons of sugar, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and a pack of dried yeast. Step one, activate your yeast. Yeast is a type of microscopic fungus. When it's activated, it pumps up your bread dough to make it soft and fluffy. Oh, so yeast is like microscopic cheerleaders. Ready? Okay! Kinda. To activate your yeast, mix the yeast with warm water in a small cup or bowl. Then add some sugar to speed up the activation process. Step two, use a sifter to sift the flour into a large bowl and mix it up really well with salt and garlic powder. We'll need these. This is why cleaning your workspace is very important. and add salt and garlic powder. Step three, add in the olive oil. And you'll wanna stir. Then wait 15 minutes for your yeast to finish activating. Whoa, I see little bubbles. That's a sign that our yeast is up and ready. Yay! Go team! Step four, gradually add your activated yeast to your dry ingredients and mix it up. You'll need to stir for five to 10 minutes until the dough starts coming away from the sides of the bowl. This is a workout. Pizza dough was not made for the week. I'm gonna use my hands. Okay. This seems a lot more effective. I would recommend using your hands. Can you move my cheese and tomato sauce? Yes. This is a workout. Dough is formed, 
and done. Now it's time for the yeast to help the bread dough grow. Step five. Put the dough in the bowl and then cover with aluminum foil and let it rest while the yeast does its thing. When you add yeast to water and flour to create dough, the yeast eats up the sugars in the flour and gives off a mixture of ethanol and carbon dioxide gas. The team's all here! The gluten in the dough traps the carbon dioxide gas, preventing it from escaping. And the more gas that forms, the more the bread dough expands. Go team, let's get that bread! Oh, so the yeast makes the dough blow up like a balloon, and that's why it makes bread so fluffy. You got it. Now that the dough is covered, let it sit for one to two hours. See ya. Ooh, let's take a look. <laughs> it's like double the size. Wow, it's huge. Yep, that's the yeast at work. Now, we just have to roll out the crust, add the toppings, and bake. Awesome, and speaking of all things bread, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of John, which tells the story of Jesus. John was one of Jesus' closest friends. He recorded stories from the life of Jesus. John describes several important miracles that point to Jesus being the Son of God so everyone would believe. Jesus did so many amazing things, and John was always right by his side. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Today's story is a feast for the mind and soul. One day, Jesus and his disciples sailed across the Sea of Galilee. However, a huge crowd of people who had seen him do miracles was hot on his trail. Hey, isn't that the guy who was healing people? It is. Where's he going? I totally want to ask for his autograph. Me too. Let's follow him. Yeah! Jesus went up onto a mountainside and sat with his disciples. But as he looked down, he saw the huge crowd approaching quickly. We, we want, want Jesus. Jesus! We want Jesus! Wow, that's a lot of people. It was high time for a meal, but there were thousands of people and no easy way to find food for all of them. Where can we buy bread for these people to eat? Um, even if we could buy enough bread for each person to have just a bite, it would take more than half a year's pay. Philip was spot on. The crowds were hungry and the disciples didn't have the money or food to feed them. The only thing that made sense was to send them away to fend for themselves. But not everyone had come unprepared. One little boy had brought some food. Um, Jesus, this boy here has five loaves of barley bread and some small fish that he's willing to share. My mama said sharing is caring. That's great, kid, but how far is this gonna go with that giant crowd? Have the people sit down. If you say so. There were more than 5,000 people present, maybe more than 10,000. Jesus had everyone sit down on the mountainside. And then Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks. Oh, hey, are we getting snacks? Yummers. Jesus began passing out the loaves and fish to the crowd. Somehow, there were always a few more pieces, and then more, and more, and more, until everyone ate as much as they wanted. Hold up. Didn't we only pass out, like, seven things? I'm no mathematician, but... After everyone had finished, Jesus told the disciples to collect the leftovers. They gathered what was left and filled, get this, 12 whole baskets with the remaining bread and fish. Five loaves plus two fish divided by 
10,000 times average person size minus 100 quotient. Eight. It's a miracle, Andrew. Leave the math to Matthew. The little boy didn't have much, but he chose to give what he did have to Jesus, who used that one small gift to perform a miracle that fed thousands of hungry people. The end. Mm, can you imagine infinitely multiplying snacks? If I was in that crowd, I wonder if I would have shared my food. Well, the kid sure didn't have to share. I mean, he never imagined it could feed everyone, but he chose to step up anyway. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, you may not feel like you have a lot to give, but when you choose to trust Jesus and offer what you have, he can use it to meet the needs of other people in a big way. That's what true compassion looks like. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. That can also be the simple stuff, right? For sure. Like, say a friend forgot their lunch. You can share half of your sandwich. It's a great way to show compassion like Jesus. And it's more than just food. Yeah, exactly. You could share your favorite game or toy or book or you can share a special skill or talent. Like if you're great at math, you can help your friend with their homework. And if you're good at art, you could share a silly drawing with your friend who's feeling down. You got it. You can even give your time to meet others' needs, like helping your mom collect canned goods for people who don't have enough food. Or smiling at everyone you meet when you go to visit your great grandma at the nursing home. Sounds like we gotta get creative. Keep our eyes open. <laughs> That's right. God made you to show compassion like Jesus in your own unique way. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. So here's the thing. Use what you have to help others. Right now, I would finally like to help you to lunch. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. This is going to be good. Mm. Mm. So yummy. How's your half? Anchovies was a mistake. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, See you next, next time. time. <laughs> mm -mm.